Okay, and welcome back to Object Oriented Programming. This is part 19. I'm calling this one, Please Cool Down My Car's Radiator. We're going to learn about controllers here, or in particular system controllers. Here we go. So the simplest ones are on-off controllers. These are the simplest ones. This is how your thermostat works in many, many HVAC systems around the country. Many, many HVAC compressors only have two settings, just on or off. So if the thermostat is in cooling mode and the temperature is too low, well, it turns off the AC. If the temperature is too high, it turns on the AC. The sequence is often labeled the auto mode. Of course, there's more going on than what first meets the eye. The first obvious problem is that the off-on cycles can't be too frequent or the compressor blows up. So therefore, your compressor actually lets your house warm up a little and then it turns on, then it cools it down below the set point and then it turns off and then it waits. We call that, or engineers call that, hysteresis. Now, the action of the HVAC and the controller cause a hysteresis loop. Normally, it's diagram like you see here on the screen, but essentially the temperature slowly climbs while the AC is off, and then it drops while the AC is on, and then the whole cycle repeats itself, which really means that the temperature is rarely at the actual set point, and it's usually plus or minus a few degrees. Now, the allowed error must be greater than zero, because you need to have adequate rest time for your machine. You'll also find, related to the on-off controllers, controllers that offer off, low, medium, and high. It's essentially the same thing, but it has four settings instead of two. The system really has two devices, a low and a high, and typically the high device is equivalent to two low devices, and this sounds very binary. So this makes four combinations, as you see on the screen here. Some systems have three windings or devices, and it gives eight combinations, but essentially it's a binary game. If you have n devices, you get two to the nth combinations. Let's look at an example of a controller for three devices. The three devices divides the histories as amplitude into, you would think eight, but no, seven sections. Why? Because the zero doesn't actually do anything in our hysteresis, right? The zero means that it's turned off. So say an HVA system has an allowable error of plus or minus three degrees. The set point is 75. So in cooling mode, we want to reach the minimum of 72 degrees, and then it's going to warm up until it hits 78 degrees, and then turn on again and go down to 72, and so on and so forth. So we read the actual temperature right now, and let's pretend it's 77 degrees. So one over two to the nth minus one is one seventh, right? Plus or minus three is six sevenths. Your little equation there is two times the allowable error divided by two to the nth minus one is how you're gonna get this. And again, if you think about it, it's pretty simple. So the actual error, error meaning the temperature where we are and the minimum allowable temperature because this is an AC and we're cooling things down of 72, well, that's five degrees. So the system error is five-sixths of the maximum allowable error. So logically, we would turn the machine near max, right? Because we're almost as hot as we could possibly hot. So what you got to do is find the multiple of one-seventh that's greater than in the little equation that's shown there or greater than five-sixths. And that's the setting that we should send to the HVAC. <laughs> But there are three devices, so we have to send three bits or three numbers. We have to send three answers, right? So let's go with this hypothetical uh, system that has three devices, A, B, and C. 
The B device is equivalent to two A's, and the C device is equivalent to, B, to two B's, and so on and so forth. So the resulting combinations are 0, 7th, 1, 7th, 2, 7th, 3, 7th, and so on. That's how much, let's say, cooling we could do. So 7 is 2 to the nth minus 1, right? Because 2 to the 3rd is 8, minus 1 is 7. Why? Because 0 to 7 is actually 8 combinations. We got to always keep in mind that 0 is a real number. So the controller picks the power level that's closest to the ideal level. Perhaps what we really need is 38.7%, but you don't get that option. So you only get 1 7th, 2 7th, 3 7th, and so on. This is a ex perfect example of what we talked about in the last video of the bitwise operations on integer types. So let's go with a real example here. My stupidly fast car, which it really is stupidly fast, has three cooling fans, so that's eight combinations. These fans are basic, simple fans. They either turn on or they turn off, and they're three different sizes. And because it's three simple cooling fans, it does not incur the cost of a pulse-width modulated proportional integral derivative system. It reduces the maintenance cost because it's certainly a lot easier to replace or maintain one little fan and one switch out of three instead of one giant and expensive fan and controller as in luxury requires. It also requires lower technology tools. Well, with increments of one seventh and an allowed error range of two and a half degrees centigrade, the radiator temperature will always be within 14% of 5 degrees or 5 seventh of a degree, which is pretty darn accurate, considering that you're talking about three simple fans with little $8 relays. So on the racetrack, even if one fan dies, the car has the other two available until you can get to the pit and swap out the fan. So that's why you use them in real life situations like this. Let's look at the pressure cooker homework. Let's give the pressure cooker N coils. The manufacturer has not yet decided how many coils it's going to have, but each coil will produce twice as much heat as the previous one, similar to the fans on my car. N will be greater than or equal to two, so there's gonna be at least four combinations. Also, we don't know what the allowed error is going to be, They'll probably do it where the more expensive pots have greater precision. So this type of control is very, very common when you don't implement PID, which again, we talked about earlier, that's the proportional integral derivative that would actually produce an output somewhere between 0 and 100%, like your cruise control. You'll be given a class that will generate the hypothetical readings of pot temperature and will respond to power levels you send to it. So you're going to have a way to, con to uh, test your controller. You want to design a generic on-off controller for a system with end devices. The class needs to know your parameters. Is the system, the measured system, going to have parameters that increase or decrease naturally? In other words, if this was going to an AC, is the house temperature going to go up or down naturally? Well, that tells you which direction you want to control the system. So in an HVAC, for example, you'd have cool mode or heat mode. What is the allowed maximum deviation from the set point? What is the set point? How many devices are going to be controlled? you're gonna make reasonable assumptions. Now the units are irrelevant because the same controller can process or can control really any type of system. So these are the <coughs> um, assumptions we're making. N equals two, set point equals 150, max deviation 3%. Here's some hints. The controller will need to provide outputs for N devices, but of course we don't know what N is. We're going to produce a list of n members, and the members are going to be integers, either 0 or 100, which equate to 0 or 100%. Why aren't we using true or false, or on and off, or yes or no? 
because you can take a number like 0 or 100 and easily multiply it or use it in calculations and create a voltage, say, that you need to produce or to give to your relay to turn the fan on and off. PID controllers will produce an output somewhere between 0 and 100%. So another reason why we want to use numbers because we want the same class to look and do both n-type controllers and PID controllers. So look at the outline shown here for ideas of what your methods might look like. Just look at the n-type controllers because that's the only one that's complete in this example. I also wanted to talk about common usage for method names. If they start with two underscores, that's normally reserved for the system. Things like init and del and many others. If it only starts with one underscore, that's usually a reserved or a private method. These are methods used internally by your class. They're not meant to be called by other objects. Other languages explicitly state public or private for each and every single attribute. That gets really, really old, trust me. In Python, everything is public. It's accessible from outside the class, which has pros and cons. One of the ways that we make sure to remind ourselves what is private and what isn't is we use that single underscore, as you see here on the examples here on the left. Some more hints for your controller class. Split methods between the main class and the subclass. There are things that have to happen whether you have one type of controller or the other. Here's an idea for your main class constructor. Note the long description. This is for you because the computer doesn't care. But in a year you won't remember what you did or why you did it. So it's a good idea to give yourself a little bit of a comment so that you know what the heck you're doing there. Some more hints. Remember the cooling fan example for my car. The further that the current temperature is from the desired temperature, the faster that the fans must run. Remember the controller could be used to raise or lower a system's parameter. The same thermostat cools or heats your house. If the system is outside of the comfort range, well, the machine's going to have to default to either full on or full off, no matter what kind of controller. So save the calculations until the comfort range. So something like what you see on the screen might help. Now I want to ask you, why is the variable output desired initialized to none? Well, ask yourself this, could we get through all of those if statements without ever touching output desired if it wasn't initialized. And if so, when we hit the return statement down here, output list requires output desired, but it wouldn't know what output desired is. Therefore, the thing would crash. This is why we have to explicitly give it a value. Last hint, and again this is the most difficult of the assignment so far. It involves understanding the logic, making the logic generic, and creating a list of settings for N devices without even knowing what N is. When you think you've got it, run this little main program right here, okay? And this little program is our set point is 180, we're allowed plus or minus 6, yes, it's a cooling type of um, application, and we have three devices. Now, if the temperature is in this range between 170 and 190, I want you to print what the output would be. The output should look like this. Now, notice when the car is cold, all three fans are off. If the fans, I'm sorry, if the car is super hot, all three fans are on. Somewhere in between, the fans are, and if you look at it closely, that's a binary sequence, going from just the low fan to just the medium fan to then the low plus the medium 
to then just the high, the high plus the low, and so on and so forth, until you get to 100% on all three of them. And that would be the answer if you did your controller correctly. Well, good luck with this. And again, shoot me an email if you get stuck. And I'll see you on the next video.